Anyone who has ever tried to digitize their own Super 8 films knows that there can be problems with flickering if the camera and projector are not coordinated. It is just as annoying when horizontal shadows move across the image. Why is this and what can be done about it? We have a projector here that has been retrofitted with film digital equipment. The optics and LED system can be easily installed in existing projectors and connected to all commercially available cameras, SLR or mirrorless, via adapters. How exactly does it work? There are many videos on our YouTube channel. But the projector and camera are not yet synchronized. Where does the interference come from? A Super 8, regular 8mm or 16mm film has 18 or 24 frames per second. In the Super 8 projector, or even the 16mm projector, there is a rotating shutter blade that covers the image very briefly and then opens up the view again. With most projectors, this happens three times per frame. Without this shutter, the recorded video would look like this. The camera also has a shutter that lets in some light for a certain amount of time. The shutter speed is important for synchronization. Now you can either change something on the projector or on the camera to adjust the speeds. There are some projector models that have infinitely variable speed control or a fixed 16.66 frames per second. Or you can buy modified projectors with an external speed control from Film Digital, which allow you to fine tune the speed to avoid interference. However, it is also possible to use the camera's shutter speed to achieve a flicker-free image. To do this, you need a camera model with a fully variable shutter speed. These would be, for example, Blackmagic cameras, Panasonic Lumix cameras, Canon EOS C300, 500, or 700. Other cameras mostly have standard shutter speeds such as 50, 60, and 100. in which case you will have to come back to modifying the projector. What is the right speed of the projector or shutter speed of the camera? Let's think again of the three-blade shutter or, in the case of 16 mm projectors, the two-blade shutter. Multiply by the number of blades. Then there are the following options. For Super 8, regular 8 mm, 18 on the projector, multiplied by 3, gives 54 as shutter speed. 16.66 on the projector, multiplied by 3, gives 50 as the shutter speed. Any camera can do this, but you need a modified projector. 24 on the projector, multiplied by 3, gives 72 as the shutter speed. This is interesting if you want to digitize Super 8 films that run at 24, such as purchased films. For 16 mm, 24 on the projector, multiplied by 2, gives 48 as the shutter speed. 25 on the projector, multiplied by 2, gives 50 as the shutter speed. Any camera can do this, but you need a modified projector. With Panasonic Lumix, such as the popular GH5 or GH6 models, the crooked shutter speed can be set via Synchro Scan, with Blackmagic simply via the camera touchscreen. Sometimes it is helpful to know how fast the projector is running. You can use a digital tachometer for this. There are various models available. You then measure a reflective piece of tape that you have previously stuck to a wing of the rotating shutter blade. This reflective tape passes the point where the measurement is taken once per frame. There are often various presets so that you can display the rotations per second on the speedometer, for example.
If the speed of the projector and the shutter speed match, you will get a very good, almost interference-free image. When the film is running, you can hardly see that one image of the film does not fit exactly on one frame in the scan. You might only notice something like this when clicking through in an editing software. If this still bothers you, you can also eliminate these ghost images and bring the movie file back to 18 frames per second. With the AviSynth Virtual Dub script of Film Digital, the Windows script is easy to use and the result is that every movie frame fits on one file frame. The ghost images or double exposures are removed without loss. The result contains 18 images, just like the analog original. Even if the camera used for digitization was set to 25p or 50p. However, the 18p file looks just like the original 18p Super 8 film, a little jerky. Nowadays we are used to smoother movements in movies. That's why we import the 18 frames per second file into a 50p sequence in the editing program, in this case Premiere Pro, and export it again. This creates a professional scan that can still be carried out in real time or almost real time and not at just 2 frames per second as with single frame scanners. This would mean that a 180 meter reel would take about 6 hours to digitize if you use the standard, inexpensive single image scanners. In addition, their sensors are usually very small, which of course cannot keep up with cameras such as a Panasonic GH5 or a Blackmagic camera. We recommend the ultra-sharp and easy-to-install optics and the evenly illuminating and adjustable LED systems from Film Digital in conjunction with a Blackmagic or Panasonic camera. This means you can use practically any projector that is in good technical condition. Or you can use your existing mirrorless or SLR camera and opt for a modified Film Digital projector if necessary. If you want to learn more about digitizing Super 8, regular 8mm and 16mm, take a look at our YouTube channel, subscribe to it and register for one of our free webinars.